Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to Space Basics. I'm here in Kerbal Space Program and I've decided that it is time to go over all the things that I know about space starting from the very beginning and the very basics, but including rendezvous, docking, uh, interplanetary transfers, and how I do the whole business basically. So we are here in the tracking station to explain just the very, very simplest thing, which is how people get into space and get into orbit. I'll cover how rocket engines work basically in the next video, but first we're going to space. We're gonna talk about space and orbit. Uh, the first thing is getting to space is relatively easy compared to staying in space. That's the most fundamental thing. Uh, space is defined as basically 100 kilometers up, which to a good approximation is about that line. Um, if you can get up there, uh, that's good enough. So you could go straight up and then come back straight down and congratulations, you have crossed the line that uh, involves reaching space. Uh, this involves about a third of the total energy you need to actually stay in space. Uh, that is because, I mean, it looks like a really tiny line, but you're fighting against gravity the whole time. So what you want to do is to not fight against gravity the whole time. And the way we do that is we launch horizontally for most of it. First, we go up in order to get out of the atmosphere because the atmosphere causes a lot of drag, slows us down, and we don't like that. And of course, if you want to stay in space, then you don't want to have to deal with atmospheric drag. You'll always be dealing with some atmospheric drag because when I say space starts there, it's about 100 kilometers up and that doesn't mean there's nothing causing drag. It just means that it's thin enough that you don't have to worry about it for the time being. Uh, you can make a whole orbit around the Earth and not come back down, basically. The higher up you are, the longer you can stay up. And uh, even if you're about 800 kilometers up, so let's say about here-ish, ooh, suddenly it's uh, different. 100 kilometers up is minimal, so that's 100 kilometers. That is absolute minimum. Uh, in fact, uh, you may or may not make one orbit if you're at 100 kilometers. 200 kilometers is safer for one orbit, and usually that's where things that are just hanging out for, for one orbit and then going somewhere else like the Moon or Mars would hang out. So that's interplanetary. Sorry, uh, this is not to scale though. Interplanetary. And then the ISS is like 400 kilometers. So that's for a station. So that's for hanging out for a long period of time. 400 kilometers. And I'll use kilometers instead of miles because that's standard in Kerbal Space Program. So uh, we want to get up past the atmosphere, but mostly we want to go horizontal because you can see the going up part isn't the big deal here. The big deal is trying to get around the Earth and that allows you to stay up. So if you tried to apply all your orbital velocity straight up, Oh, that did that again. Uh, if you tried to apply all your orbital velocity straight up, you're gonna go straight up and straight down again. So we don't want to do that. So you'll see rockets go horizontal more, and that's so that they wrap around. What really is happening is that they're applying their velocity vector that away, and then the Earth is constantly pulling down at it at any given point because of gravity. And then it curves like this. So because the gravity is pulling down on it, and maybe I could draw that a little bit better. And so here, the actual velocity vector is in this direction, but it'll still be pulled down. It's always tangent, which means that it's at that point, uh, it's a line at that point that only hits at that one point. So it's always like that. And here it'll be like this and here it'll be like that and so forth, but it's always being pulled down by the Earth. So how we get to orbit is we have to go really fast horizontally so that the Earth doesn't get a chance to pull us down all the way because if we're too slow, it'll just pull us down like that. But if you go faster and faster, there's the whole cannonball on the top of the mountain idea. If you can shoot it horizontally fast enough, it'll just miss the Earth. And what we're trying to do is miss the Earth. <laughs> uh, so you, you'll have an arc like this, an arc like that, 
I'm sorry for the bad drawing. Arc like that, arc like that, and eventually your arc gets wider and wider and you'll eventually miss the Earth. And there's a lot of sort of unintuitive things about how space works. The most fundamental thing, of course, is that once you're in space, there's, except for the tiny little particles causing a tiny bit of drag, uh, you will just stay going in the way you've been going and there is nothing stopping you because there's no friction and without sufficient atmospheric drag, you're not slowing down. So, and the higher up you are, the easier it is uh, to stay where you're going. And so we don't talk about range in space because the range, in st as long as you're outside of the atmosphere, the range is effectively infinite um, and or just really, really, really big. So we don't talk about range. We talk about the speed that we need to get to places. So the speed that we actually need to make orbit, the horizontal velocity that we need so that the Earth does not pull us down, the minimal one is 7,800 meters per second. Sorry, M slash S, meters per second. And this is roughly 16,000 miles an hour. Whenever I say meters per second, you can, it's basically multiply that by 2.2 and you get the miles per hour. So that's 16,000 miles per hour or 7.8 kilometers per second. That's the minimum. But here's another annoying thing about space. The higher the orbit is, the slower it is. So an orbit over here could be 7,400 meters per second. And if we zoom out, and let me clear all these. If we zoom all the way out and check how the moon is doing, the moon's only at 1,000 meters per second. And if you are at the orbit of the moon, you would be going 1,000 meters per second around the Earth too. Uh, and so as we get higher, we get slower. So does that mean that uh, it would takes less effort to get to that orbit? No. Uh, it just means you're getting slower. You're going slower when you get there. But the weird thing, it, it, it's, it's really annoying to understand how orbits work, but you're going slower, but it's like we're starting in a pit. And so let me draw our gravity pit. You're in a gravity well. You've heard this term before, and I'll make it nice and thick here. We are in a pit, okay? And the, the question is, how much effort does it take? This pit is formed by the gravity of the Earth. And so things around here, close to the Earth, go around really, really quickly. It's like spinning at the bottom of a sink, but that's a bad analogy because the sink... Anyway, we'll just ignore that for a sec. So things down here spin really fast, but then things up here, so if they're in an orbit like that, spin slower and slower. So at the orbit of the moon, it's less than uh, one-seventh the speed of the Earth, but to actually climb out takes a lot of effort. So we have to go upslope to climb out. And if we want to get to the moon, it's not really obvious how much we need to take, but if we start in low Earth orbit, so around here, Right, that was 7,800 meters per second or 16,000 miles an hour. To actually go to the moon, go out to the moon, that will take another 3,200 meters per second. Not that much compared to how much it actually took to get around the Earth because we're really deep in the pit when we're actually on the surface of the Earth. So once we're in orbit around the Earth, it doesn't take that much extra to get out to the moon. So uh, to an approximation, this is maybe uh, 6,800 miles an hour extra. Sorry, MPH. I'm drawing this with the mouse. If I had a pad or something, it would be easier. So ultimately, uh, 23,000 miles per hour or something like that. I always think about it in meters per second, though. Uh, so that will get you out. And what will happen is that when you try and apply that force, and let's zoom out to include the moon. So you start out in orbit like this, and again, a little bit sloppy, but it's supposed to be not hitting the Earth. And then you 
increase your speed so your velocity here was like this and then you decide that you want to increase your speed so you can go to the moon you will still increase your speed horizontally but then that the upper end of your orbit gets increased so you'll get an orbit that's elongated like this and that will hit the moon at one end so you get all these ellipses all the orbits are ellipses you can sort of start in a circle but uh, you get an ellipse and uh, you'll meet up with the moon over there. That takes the 3,200 meters per second. And then you're going to have to raise this end up once you get over there in order to match the moon's orbit because you're in an ellipse, but the moon isn't an ellip in an elliptical orbit. The moon is in a roughly circular orbit. Oops. So the moon is like that. And so if you're going to get out there, you got to start out making elliptical orbit and then once you get to the moon you got to raise this end up by actually burning horizontally i know everything is a horizontal burn you think oh well you, you gotta lift this end up so what you're gonna do is you're gonna burn in this direction right no <laughs> no you're not burning in this direction in order to lift that end up you're bur burning horizontally because above all else we do not want to fight against gravity uh, or even go in the same direction of gravity. So we are going to go horizontally and that will actually add more energy into our orbit and adding more energy into our orbit will lift it up so that we get the circular orbit like that. We'll go over how all this energy stuff with the orbits work when we do rendezvous. So this is sort of like talking about a rendezvous with the moon. But the important thing to understand is that the higher orbits are slower, but that doesn't mean it takes less energy to get there. Uh, it still takes more energy than uh, getting into a lower Earth orbit, and that's because the Earth is in a pit. And now, what if you wanted to just come right back down? This is sort of like ballistic missiles, or they've talked about doing suborbital missions with Starship. You know, what if you wanted to do an arc across the Atlantic like that and just get to some other location on the surface of the Earth? Well, that takes only a little bit less than get, getting to orbit. And that's because you're, you can sort of see you're already stretching most of the way around the Earth like that. I mean, if it's something small like that much, then that's about 4,000 meters per second right there. You can make that hop. But once you get a large portion of the total diameter of the Earth, you th have to think about the Earth's diameter. If you're covering a large portion of the Earth's diameter, and this is a fairly large chunk of the total diameter, then you're going to be going very fast indeed. You're getting pretty close to the full orbital velocity in order to cover that distance. So using rockets to do suborbital missions, uh, just suborbital flights, is very difficult. And you're going to be coming back down really hot. Uh, so yeah, you'll want to think about that. If you're in Kerbal Space Program, for instance, if you're doing space missions, it is much nicer for your Kerbals if you barely go up and down than if you try and go up and then come down like that. You're going to be ending up going very fast like that and it's going to get really hot. Uh, part of the issue is the steepness of it, just the angle of the scent. If you're in a full orbit, the return is much milder. And the heat uh, is applied... Uh, sort of over a longer period of time which can have its downsides but anyway so that's orbit and coming back down again i've probably overshot my mark as far as what i wanted to explain but there there are a lot of ways to explain it but basically we are only going up and fighting against gravity in order to get out of the atmosphere and so let's take a look at an actual launch to see what is going on now, remember, the orbit around the Earth is 7.8 kilometers per second, or 7,800 meters per second. And we're packing a total delta V, which is how much speed we can totally build up, is 9,695 meters per second. I'll explain delta V more later, but it's basically the equivalent of spacecraft range. Because spacecraft have infinite range, functionally speaking, uh, we talk about how much we can change our orbit. So we can change our orbit starting from the start here. 
Getting into orbit, we need 7.8 kilometers per second, and then getting out to the moon, we need another 7.2 kilometers per second, or 7,200 meters per second. So we talk about how much velocity we need in order to change our orbit, not how much distance we need to get. But I'll explain that further later on. This is all about just getting to orbit. But why are we packing this particular amount uh, instead of, say, 7,800, which is what the orbital velocity is? Well, the remainder of that is all to deal with atmospheric drag and fighting against gravity. So gravity loss and atmospheric drag account for the remainder of that, which amounts to about 1,800 additional meters per second, or mm, say 4,000 miles an hour. So we're losing 4,000 miles an hour of potential energy uh, by fighting against gravity and fighting against atmospheric drag, but we have no choice. But we'll try and get above all that as soon as possible. So, I need to fix that little issue, but throttle up, SAS on, SAS is not on, we'll have smart ASS do it, ignition. And launch. So, that is a fairly stately thing. The faster you get off the pad, the less drag you're going to experience, of course. So there is a benefit to uh, having a rocket that lifts off quicker, but there is a limit because as you go faster through the atmosphere, the drag increases by the square of the velocity. So, on one hand, if you're accelerating faster, you'll get through the atmosphere quicker, uh, you'll spend less time in the atmosphere. On the other hand, the faster you're going in the atmosphere, the more drag there is. So, it's sort of a competition between those factors and so there's got to be a sweet spot depending on the shape of the rocket and often that's usually between a thrust weight ratio we'll talk more about thrust weight ratio later actually let's just save that for now so you can see I, I was going, only going straight up for a very short period of time in fact I'm gonna lean down much faster and by about 20 kilometers high and that's what we've got up there. At about 20 kilometers high, I'll be at a 45 degree angle. In stock Kerbal Space Program, uh, you might get to a 45 degree angle at about 15 kilometers, would be about right. And that is because in stock Kerbal Space Program, your uh, atmosphere ends at 70 kilometers. Here it ends at 140, though 100 kilometers is sort of the official uh, point at which we call it space. Everything depends on what your next stage is. Rockets aren't very... The rocket engines aren't so efficient that you can do everything in one stage. So we dump the spent mass behind and use a smaller mass to actually get to orbit. And so we're going to do that. And depending on how big an engine you've got on your upper stage, that determines how much pitch you need to hold in order to make sure you have enough time to get to orbit. Everything is about how much time you have to get to orbit. We could go straight horizontal if we had enough time, but right now, uh, clicking uh, the orbital info here, and again, you could go back to this mode and click that. Uh, getting the orbital info, we have this time to reach apoapsis. One and a half minute, basically, right there. But we've got a five minute upper stage. So we need to make sure that the upper stage has enough time to complete all of its delta V, to complete its burn. Otherwise, we're going to come right back down again because we won't have had enough time. We're not through the atmosphere yet, but it's thin enough that it's not causing us any problems. And let me just change a few things here. Okay. And igniting this upper stage. So we leave that spin stage behind so that we have less dry mass that we're lugging along. And m most Earth orbit rockets will do that. And once we're in space, we can also dump the fairing that covers the payload so that we don't have to deal with its mass either. For simplicity's sake, we'll stick to surface mode. So we're keeping this additional pitch instead of going straight horizontal because we need enough time to burn. And our goal is to, very close to the end of the burn, reach zero meters per second vertical speed. So then we'll be fully horizontal. Now, if that time is ticking up, 
we know that we've got too much pitch and we can pitch down. So you can see our orbit right now and we'll be ending up in the Gulf of Mexico again. So we haven't even gotten to Florida yet on this trajectory. And we're close to about halfway to to our full orbit. This is the surface fixed velocity. Because Earth is rotating, there's a difference between how fast we're going relative to the surface versus how fast we're going in orbit. So this is how fast we're going relative to an orbital velocity. And this includes the rotation of the Earth. This does not. Uh, once it seems like we have half that left to apoapsis. Apoapsis is the high point of our or orbit. So once we, uh, so right now the maximum height that we will be reaching is 187 kilometers, 188 kilometers. If we pitch down, you'll see that that increases less. And ultimately if I go into a negative, it'll start decreasing. So we don't want to go to a negative, but perhaps just going flat now will be fine. So again, we're trying to extend our orbit horizontally, and let's get rid of some of the additional lines right now. Just keep going horizontally so we wrap around. Right now, the Earth is pulling us down, and we are crashing. And what we're looking for is, in this mode, 7.8 kilometers per second, or 7,800. In this mode, it'll be more like 7,400. So the rotation of the Earth gives us a bonus 400 meters per second. That will depend on where you're launching from. The closer to the equator you are, the faster the Earth rotates in that location. The closer to the pole you are, the less the rotational velocity is. So here we're getting pretty close to our actual peak height, so we will pitch up a little bit to sort of stay here. Make sure that vertical speed doesn't go down too much. Now it's going up, you see the vertical speed there. Uh, you can also see the vertical speed on that indicator there. In the stock Kerbal Space Program, you won't have any of these displays. Uh, not very helpful, but we're going to hang out as close to zero on that vertical speed as possible, uh, pitching up as necessary. So keep it like between the 10 and negative 10 will be fine. And there's Florida, and we're hanging out at 192 kilometers. Remember I said that about 200 kilometers is okay if we're going somewhere else afterwards. If we're trying to go to the space station, that'll be 400 kilometers. So you see, the very little pitch necessary at this point in order to keep our vertical speed close to zero. And that's because the gravity is not affecting us as much anymore. And it's trying to show further orbits even though we're still crashing into the Atlantic. But you can see just to cross the Atlantic, we're getting very close to the full orbital velocity. And here it's really getting there. May 7,200 meters per second. So we need to shut down. So just shy of where we need to shut down as we make orbit is where we finally get to the point where we can have a suborbital transfer. So we need a lot of energy in order to just cross the Atlantic with a rocket. And there's not a whole lot of point using this sort of system to do that uh, unless you're in a crazy hurry. So we make sure that our periapsis, which is the low point of our orbit, is positive. And make sure it's positive, but also make sure it's above the atmosphere, which in this case right now is 140 kilometers. And on average, we're looking for 200 kilometers on this, and we're above that. And uh, again, without the orbital velocity, we're at 7,371 meters per second. With the orbital velocity, you can see it is 7,801.2, which is what we wanted. And our orbit ends up looking like that, very tight to the Earth. Again, Earth's atmosphere is very thin, and so we only need a little bit of going up and a whole lot of going horizontal in order to get into orbit. So that's the basic idea of space versus orbit. Uh, getting to space 
easy. We could have just gone straight up and straight back down. That still takes a lot because again, you're fighting against gravity the whole way. So remember how we packed 1,800 meters per second extra initially in order to defeat the gravity losses and the drag? Well, you'll still need all of that in order to get to space. So getting into space, even though it looks like a small hop, it's not that easy. Uh, we'll still need all of those uh, to compensate for all of those losses. But as much as possible, we want to avoid dealing with gravity and atmospheric drag. So we go up as quickly as possible and then spend most of our time going horizontally so that we do not have to get pulled back down by the Earth. Well, it's always pulling us down. If Earth was suddenly not there, we'd be going horizontally like this. So we'll just be going horizontally at any location. If Earth disappeared right here, we'll be going like that, and so forth. So that's how our trajectory actually is. But because Earth is pulling us down, we get into this circular thing. And well, we will go over all the other stuff in future videos, but that is the basics of orbit. Uh, tell me uh, in the comments whether you have any other questions. I don't know if I did a very good job covering this or not. I tried my best, and I probably blabbed a whole lot. We'll see. Anyway, uh, also tell me what future videos you would like. I will. Event I know rendezvous and docking is a popular topic, so we'll go over that in great detail. But we'll go over how to make a rocket, how the rocket engines actually work, and uh, perhaps for most of my audience, these are things you already know, but we'll go over all of it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.